Yes, the real media. KJAG Radio and KMA Entertainment, your source for entertainment news and interviews in Central and South Central Kansas. The best of the best are here, and we go above and beyond to bring you the most bang for your buck. Find us on the social sites like Facebook and Twitter. Log on to kjagradio.com and jiggyjaguar.com for more. Thank you. Good night. I used to say, I, I, I wanted to say Community Access Television, the lowest rated show on Access. I don't know why. I just went right back into that mode. Romy, what's going on, homie? Uh, much, what's up? <laughs> How are you? Hello. <laughs> How are you? Awesome. Talk to me about tonight. Tonight. It's awesome. <laughs> and Hutchison, the salt capital of Kansas in the world, the salt city, the great salt city, you're right. I always tried to figure out, Hutch had the great salt city, what is Salina? Meth horse. I was there for seven years and I'm like, what? Meth, uh, meth horse. It's the meth whore capital of the world? There's like three colleges up there, so yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, talk to me about how you got started doing comedy, man. JC's Bar and Grill in Salina about 10 years ago. Started hosting shows up there. Uh, quit doing it for about four or five years and yeah. got, got back into it at the Looney Bin in Wichita. That's cool. Became a regular there. So I don't very I don't do it very often still, so, but it's fun. And I did a little guest set tonight. Now talk to me about your source of like material. How, what when when because like rappers, you know the, the, these loser rappers that uh, my, my my little friend Jay Marie hangs out with. They, they always sit down with pads and paper and write things down. When you do comedy, do you just are driving around and be like, oh, that's a funny joke, you're going to write that down? How does this happen? Yeah. Because I'm talentless. If I don't, so if I don't I, write it down, it's gone forever. I think my best material and best jokes I've ever written are gone because I didn't write it down at the time. But um, I don't sit down. Like some comics just take an hour out of the day, sit down and write. It's just anything. i got to be funny for an Anything hour. I see or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anything I see, I'll, I'll, I'll write it down or whatever. I come back. Like I got a shoebox full of jokes I wrote back when I first started, like eight or nine years ago. Yeah. But I was actually able to pick a few out and write some punchlines to them. I actually did a couple of them tonight that went over pretty good. But stuff like I now, who are like your, years ago. Who are your influences? Carlin, Kinnison, uh, Doug Stanhope, Mitch Hedberg. That's my. That's my. Uh, that's your go-to. Course. Yeah, my Mount Rushmore. Comedians. There you go. Bill Hicks. I'm just now. That's cool. Like, like I didn't. I was a kid when he died. So yeah. Just now getting into him. It's a great, uh, great documentary on Netflix about him called oh, really? American Love Story. That's cool. great. Now, uh, social networking. How do you use it? I know that you use Twitter a lot. Yeah, I'm on Twitter all the time. Yeah, I, I prefer Twitter. I don't like Facebook because everybody wants to have an opinion about what you're saying right. on Facebook, and I don't need it. That's right. <laughs> now, um, my buddy cousin Chris here, that's running the camera, is uh, not a fan of, of our mutual friend Zombie Jones. Uh, what, 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 give me an assessment of Zombie Jones and his professional wrestling. I've only seen video of it. Is it good? I've never is it seen bad? What do you think? I've seen, well, he did this one move I've seen up in wherever he's at, Kansas City right now. It's pretty cool. I can't describe it. It's yeah. not a move I've ever seen before, but he yeah. pulled it off on some mattresses. Oh, that's cool. Uh, now, I know that you, you... I hated Zombie, but he's not bad now. I get along with him now, but I hated him. You were there one night when he came up and punched me in the ass at Big Nose Cates. And I was going to fucking kill him. I got him back like three months later. He was at my house, and he was... They ducked... You know, zombies, the foil of everybody's joke. They duct taped him to a lawn chair in, my, in the backyard, and I was drunk, and I bull rushed him. <laughs> and he was just helpless, just went over like that. So I got him. So it all works. Yeah. <laughs> well, how do we find you on Twitter, sir? At sexy fat funny. <laughs> Right. And it's completely unfiltered. It's ridiculous. Now, before before I let you go, earlier we were talking about um, you did a show, a uh, very memorable show. I don't know if it was like we called a show at the Blue Goat, where you opened for some really crappy bands. <laughs> I wouldn't say they were crappy. They were assholes to me, though. And they were assholes to me. You know that scene? You know that scene in Howard Stern's movie Private Parts when he goes out as Spark Man, like the opening scene, yeah. and then he walks backstage and everybody's like looking at him. That's how I felt. Like 
like they were all friends and like I go up and do ten minutes of material that I wrote and then the second band comes up and the singer goes, he's like, You just weren't funny, bro. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Bandana Dude that's up there singing Guns N' Roses covers for an hour. I was like, I can't go up there and do George Carlin jokes because you get called in the comedy community for doing anything remotely like the, anybody else's material. There, there is no cover comedian, so yeah, so I hate <laughs> I used to love going to watch bands that play Stop. cover tunes, now I hate them because they're assholes. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. Your own songs. It's been an honor, and uh, thanks for watching Chicky Jake TV.